A new Star Citizen Alpha 3.23 patch just hit Evo Cardi this Sunday. And we're going straight into the patch notes. Just to let y'all know this video is going to be a little bit informal. I'm going to be reading the patch notes, at least the key points of the patch notes. So it may not be as smooth as you expect, but uh, let's just get straight into it. The testing focus for this one is going to be stability, um, full character customizer revamp, EVA tier two, new loot screen, new visor and lens, backpack reloading, ammo repooling, dynamic crosshair, physical shopping UI. It's an interesting one, never heard about it, um, but this is going to be one of the newer ones that they didn't, uh, I guess they, they said will be a surprise and server crash recovery. Features that are not ready for testing or feedback is going to be master mode, Moby Glass rework, the star map, interior map and mini map, PIE and PIS and default item actions, freight elevators, haul emissions, reputation based hostility and more. There's quite a few known issues. We're not going to go through them here, but we're going to go through the features that is now added into this build. The very first one is going to be the character customizer. It says the character customizer has been rebuilt from the ground up and include multiple new ways to achieve the character look and styles you've been dreaming of. This includes multiple new base head models, new hairstyles, new eyebrows, makeup, facial hair, character creation, saving and retrieval and more very exciting uh to hear about this one this is a big one to be able to do more customization i'm loving the new hairstyles that they've been adding to this up next is going to be eva tier 2 it says bring in the full squadron 42 eva implementation into star citizen for the first time this greatly improves EVA system and adds more needed control, animations, gameplay, and finesse for players traversing 0G from outside their ship. Animations and traversal. It says player movement and position is a completely new experience with Star Citizen 3.23. The first thing players will notice is that they will no longer be in vertical while maneuvering and instead be in a more superhero pose this pose gives much more flexibility with player maneuverability rotation and viewing angles while also feeling much more natural and overall more aesthetically pleasing to see from this new pose players will have a full 360 horizontal rotation while body direction will remain constant until thrusted in the direction slower eva speeds are now enforced in interior spaces, improved strafing and maneuverability, made transitions between gravity and no gravity more robust. There are multiple new animation poses for no weapons, weapon, pistol, stocked, shouldered animations and consumable use, one and two handed items and movie glass use. This is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see the images or videos of this eventually once they get that in. It says fuel and consumption system Players will now have a limited EVA fuel in their suit while making planning trips into zero G more necessary. This adds support for EVA thrusters on undersuits, torsos, armors, and backpack. In an emergency situation, if a player's suit runs out of fuel, their suit will transfer oxygen supply to thrust when, when fuel supply is empty which could be slightly boost needed to survive. That is interesting. Um, suit oxygen replenished quickly while in a breathable atmosphere. Nitroxy pens will resupply suit fuel and oxygen. Interesting. Initially, they said this wasn't going to be in the initial build, the, the fuel system, but uh, I'm glad that they're adding this. This is interesting. Visor and lens HUD rework is the next one. Here it says converting squadron for two visor over to star citizen. The Visor and lens system have now been updated to use building blocks for improved performance and flexibility. This updated system brings much needed user experience updates to adapt on the fly to the player's situation in and out of combat. Next is going to be FPS loot screens. So introducing a new screen for looting critical items quickly, allowing a more reliable inventory management in tense situations with this update player can rapidly transfer items to 
their weapon magazines and consumables and throwables also or transfer all into their backpack selecting loot options on a crate will bring up the new fps looting interface while open, it will bring up the original inventory window. Added a button on top of the inventory screen to swap between the new and the old looting interface. Next is going to be physical shopping UI, which is going to be a surprise because we haven't heard anything about this. So let's see. It says new way items in shop interact with player augmented reality has been updated to give a clear and detailed information about the physical item they are browsing player will no longer need to hold f when approaching items on a store shelf looking at an object while close to it and a new ar information window will appear next to the object in view with description of what the item does its stats price your current funds and a new hold b to buy option interesting up next is going to be the reload improvements it says reload improvement has been integrated from Spider for two into star citizen this includes many quality of life additions such as ammo repooling and backpack reloading reloading during certain situations have been overhauled to allow multiple reloading types allow players to first reload from their equipment slotted magazines then from their backpacking personal storage with a bit longer of a search time once those have been exhausted implemented similar functionality for a quick select wheel from inventory and ramaging this new functionality includes ui on the player's hud to let the player know where their next reload will come from and how many overall munitions they have left in all personal inventory for the currently held weapon empty mags will now result in them being tossed away instead of being reattached to your suit interesting next is going to be dynamic crosshair combat helmets now support dynamic crosshair which allows for quicker target acquisition in close quarter situations the dynamic crosshair is a system that allows crosshair to accurately represent the player where the projectile will leave the barrel and hit. Unlike most first person shooters, our projectiles fire from the barrel and when firing in hip mode, this can make it difficult to judge just where the bullet is going to land. The dynamic crosshair can help combat this issue with moving with the player when they move their mouse input around the screen for example if the player should move around the corner of the building the crosshair will stick to the wall until the entire barrel has moved past the wall and will then appear in the foreground we want the crosshair to be dynamic to your movement and actions the crosshair is animated while you move and perform in action to help the demonstrate the amount of spread your movement has on a projectile Players will have a choice of two options when it comes to dynamic crosshair, having it permanently off or have it permanently on when wearing any combat helmet. Players can decide to toggle the crosshair on and off via the settings option. Combat helmet required. In terms of the lore of Star Citizen, the crosshair will appear on the player's helmet visor via augmented reality. This means if the player does not have the combat helmet on, they will not be able to use this feature taking the helmet off or using a non-combat rated helmet will cause the dy dynamic cost here to not display in the pu with there being multiple brand manufacturers for helmets there is an option for the crosshair to change its visor look based on the manufacturer's design the crosshair will not swap to different objects since we are trying to add a level of ar realism the crosshair should be responsive but soft floating onto different objects. Hit markers. It says with the return of crosshairs, we also want to introduce a new hit marker back into the game. Currently, we have a flash setup for the hit marker in the game, but 323 brings this over into building blocks. These hit markers are visible from both the hip and also in ADS mode. The new hit markers have the style and sound changes based on body, head, 
or kill shot. Hit markers are directly tied to the dynamic crosshair, so if the player turns off the crosshair and the options or changes to a non-combat helmet, they will not receive any hit marker for hitting their target. That's interesting. Okay, so the core tech for this one is going to be replication layer update. It says over the course of 323 patch cycle, the replication layer will be moved off of the game service and set up its own standalone service. In the short term, this will allow for the game servers to recover without disconnecting players to their so their progress will not be lost. During a crash, a message will be displayed saying the server is recovering. In this phase, it should take about two to five minutes. So please wait on this to complete and the replication layer will move everyone to the new server. All right, so under bug fixes here, they fixed an issue where the player receives a 30K when attempting to enter the PU. They also fixed an issue where all shops are missing items off of the shelf in the kiosk. They fixed uh, a missing elevator in UGF locations. They also fixed an issue where NPCs stand on furniture. That's always been a problem, man. The Hornet Mach 2 audio may use a placeholder other ship sounds. They also fixed an issue where all Origin X1 variants fail to spawn correctly when retrieving or the game mode starts. The Gatak, the Gatak sailing failed to spawn correctly when retrieving or game mode starts. Corsair fails to spawn correctly when retrieving or game mode starts. Also, they also fixed another issue where AI do not spawn inside a security post Korea. They fixed an issue where when repeatedly pressing I to access the inventory, the inventory HUD fails to display as well as the actor's head may be missing they fixed an issue where too many ais are spawning during the additional derelict missions they fixed an issue where bounties does not complete their killing they fixed an issue where bounty does not complete after killing the target many rocks assets have physical proxies that can trap the player in a fallen state when walking over them that's a good fix some caves have gaps in geometry players can fall into which has been fixed. They also fixed an issue where you can't open assigned hospital room doors. They also fixed an issue where players hold medical trays incorrectly, hands clipping through. They also fixed an issue where closed hangar doors of a hangar occupied by a ship will open when another ship collides with them. They also fixed an issue when flying large ships near the planet or moon surface, client performance will drop and degrade significantly. They fix an issue when attempting to get a quote or a player receives the error, something went wrong. They also fix an issue where player is stuck in bed after loading into the PU after recovering from a server crash. They also fix an issue where accepted missions will be abandoned after the server have been recovered from a crash. And they fixed an inconsistent frame time and stuttering during standard gameplay. Along with this, they have seven client crashes as well as five server crashes. Just to let y'all know, my organization, Phase 1 Industries, is now recruiting new and veteran players. If you are interested, you can find our Discord in the description down below. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on our next video.